one of the creators at the LBI DHP. Um, I have the pleasure of leading the areas of digital health intervention development and also um, data analytics, user modeling. And uh, it is in that area where um, today's research topic uh, is focused. It is a very important um, area of development, of course, as um, we see the amounts of data that uh, are becoming available, which could be of relevance to digital health systems grow and expand every day. There are, of course, increasing challenges then of what to do with it, how to handle it, uh, and how to unearth the opportunities that come with these developments, and also to consider the challenges um, that arise uh, with these opportunities. Um, so for the session today, I um, just want to briefly remind everybody where we're at. So um, yeah, we are, we are here. Uh, this is the third of three research highlight sessions. Um, thank you if you've joined any of the other ones. We're still happy to have you around. Um, and uh, today we will have three 10-minute uh, spotlight talks followed by a keynote. Um, just as a reminder for everyone, you are visiting a webinar, so it's a little bit less interactive than Zoom sessions you might be used to. Nonetheless, we see you. We are happy to have you. Um, feel free to ask questions at any time in writing using the Q&A functionality. And if you prefer um, yeah, saying your questions out loud live, then feel free to use the raise your hand feature um, during the discussion times, and you can ask your questions using your own voice, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, so right now we are about 41 participants. We're happy to have you all. And uh, yeah, let's get to the talks. Um, so we will start today with a, a presentation on exploring multi-level customization and data analysis for personalized digital health interventions that will be given by Sebastian Gruber, who is a pre-doc researcher at our institute. Uh, Sebastian um, is um, enrolled at the Johannes Kepler University of Linz for doing his PhD, where he's also um, completed his master degree in business informatics beforehand. And um, yeah, we're very happy ha to have you, uh, Sebastian. I will um, ask you to share your slides and uh, hand over the presentation to you for the next few minutes. Thank you for these kind words, Jan. Um, I'm going to share my slides. Well, um, yeah, I'm very excited to give a brief overview of my dissertation project, actually. Um, the title is Exploring Multilevel Customization and Data Analysis for Personalized Digital Health Interventions. And um, let's start with a brief scenario. Imagine you plan to go for a walk after work today. Now the weather is sunny and you have no appointments for the next two hours, but later in the day it will rain. So at this point you may wonder if it wouldn't be helpful to get a message on your smartphone suggesting you go for a walk right now. And yeah, we can use personalized digital health interventions for such a case, for example, the just-in-time adaptive intervention. Um, Cheetahs, in short, aim at supporting behavior change for individuals, for example, promoting physical activity. And by building on advances in mobile technology, for example, using the sensors built in in smartphones to capture external um, or contextual data of uh, individuals. And Cheetahs are um, defined as a multi-component intervention with uh, the components like decision points, which are points in time at which an intervention decision is actually made, um, tailoring variables, which are information concerning the individual, like internal and external values, such as the location of an individual. We have intervention options, which is an array of uh, treatments that can be applied at any point in time and finally, decision rules, which link tailoring variables and intervention options to provide the right amount of support at the right time. The outcomes are measured in terms of proximal outcomes and distal outcomes. Proximal outcomes are short-term outcomes. For example, the number of steps 16 minutes following an intervention, while, while the distal outcome is the long-term outcome, for example, the weight loss over a few months. Well, uh, let's continue with our scenario. Imagine you're a researcher now and you want to develop and ev evaluate the replanning cheetah. 
The replanning cheat there suggests users to reschedule already planned exercise sessions um, to, um, to more appropriate times to improve their adherence to recommended levels of planned um, of physical activity. And you have implemented different variants of this cheetah for different use cases and are now facing difficulties in comparing them. So um, why are you facing difficulties? Um, there are different data models of cheetah implementations in different use cases. And they all require custom code for query-based interactions with data. And by query-based interactions, I basically mean uh, rules, triggers, aggregations, and anything that reads from the data. And for comparison across different use cases, each cheetah implementation needs to be investigated individually to develop custom scripts for um, analysis, for example, to integrate the data. And we consider this from a data engineering point of view as a lack of consistency, which means in short, um, if we define a query or a query-based operation for one data model, um, and we can perform the same query over another data model and achieve the intended result, then these two models are query consistent. So the question arises, how can we avoid these difficulties? And our idea is to use conceptual modeling of cheetah studies and cheetahs. So basically to develop a reference model of cheetah studies and cheetahs, and based on the reference model, enable customization at multiple levels of context, which means from broad context like studies or different study types to more specific context like user types in, or individual users of a study. But at the same time, preserving query consistency to develop one consistent, coherent and conceptually clear model. So this may sound odd, but let's go through an example. Um, let's assume this is our uh, reference model here, a bit simplified. So we have a study and within studies, there are users and for users, we measure a distant outcome and we represent cheetahs as observation-based decisions, whether to provide support and the result measured as proximal outcome. And in the following example, we use a nested, uh, we use nesting for a condensed representation. So basically the composition relationship here is uh, represented as uh, nesting of user in study, for example. Okay, so let's start with our reference model. And we customize this reference model or we can customize by introducing different study types for different purposes. For example, we introduced a micro randomized trial and it, it specializes or it customizes our reference model. So we specialize the components of the reference model here and introduce an additional customization, which is we randomize intervention decisions, which is uh, true for all micro-randomized trials. We also introduce a study type for all studies, which include the replanning cheetah. And here we introduce um, the, the replanning cheetah as a calendar and weather-based observation, whether to provide a suggestion and um, measured whether uh, the individual actually replanned their um, planned physical activity. Well, we can now introduce a, a particular study, which we call here the activity study. And the activity study is a micro randomized trial and it incorporates the replanning cheetah. So it basically specializes or customizes these two um, study types and therefore be we customize the schema here. And in addition, we introduce as a distant outcome, the adherence to recommended levels of physical activity, and we randomize the decision for the replanning cheetah. We can also, for example, introduce different user types in that study, like a user group A and a user group B. And for user group B, we also provide replanning reminders. And finally, we can introduce a individual user like or participant like Chain, and Chain is a user of group B. So we can customize the schema of user group B for Chain. And for Chain, for example, we we also um, observe the stress or we consider her uh, current stress for decision making. So this is actually done uh, prior to a study, and 
based on these models, um, cheetahs can be enacted by systems and data can be collected um, according to these models. And these models are not refined at runtime or during a study anymore. So we basically collect data. Here we have um, the outcome 98, for example, which uh, was collected today at lunchtime and Jane actually replanned her uh, planned physical activity. And now let's start um, talking about multi-level data analysis. We can now introduce, for example, a meter class or more precisely the power type of the replanning uh, outcome class, which has the replanning outcome class as well as all its, um, all its uh, subclasses, all its customizations, as instances. So this class here as well, as well as this class and this class. So all the schema we define with this meta class um, um, also uh, concerns these classes. Here we um, define a replanning rate as a resultant property. And we also define the rule to compute the replanning rate. And since the rule is a query-based computation, we just have to define it here. And this leads us to automatically de derive the replanning rate for chain, the replanning rate for user group B in activity study, as well as for user group A, but this is not represented here. The replanning rate for um, the users overall in the activity study and the uh, replanning rate of all, um, of all studies regarding the replanning cheetah. So we basically can reuse um, query-based operations, which um, improve efficiency. Now, uh, building such models by hand is cumbersome. As you can imagine, this is a very simple and basic example, and it already had difficulties representing meter classes here. So we developed a prototype, which is based on semantic web technologies, um, because they provide high flexibilities for managing these um, class hierarchies, and they also provide the potential to publish models in the web and reuse them from the web. And this version of the prototype is also um, open source available at our GitHub repo. So, oh, <laughs> my presentation time is almost up. Um, thank God I got this uh, reminder just in time. So to wrap it up, there is a lack of query consistency, which makes, for example, comparison of cheetah is difficult. Our idea is to use concept conceptual multi-level modeling. And this has, uh, beyond solving the problem, some more um, 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 potential, for example, to improve efficiency in cheetah development or automating structural validation of studies and automating data analysis. And currently, we're working on integrating concepts from product lines to improve reusability and implementation and evaluation in practice. Here are some references. and. Thank you. All right. Many thanks, uh, Sebastian, for that uh, insightful uh, presentation, which you managed to finish just in time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is a very um, interesting but complex um, challenge area, I would say. Um, so far, we have not received uh, audience questions in writing. Um, so just a kind reminder, feel free to use the Q&A box to ask any questions you may have um, or to alternatively raise your hand um, in the using the raise your hand feature. Uh, if you if you'd like to ask a question directly using voice, uh, then we can bring you in to ask a question directly. Um, so. Yeah, for the time being, um, I have, of course, many questions about your projects uh, continuously, as you know. Um, so one of